Well, on this uh, first round start list, uh, Nostein, Yoshioka, Rash, Vendetta, and Kreitsch. So lined up there, the Japanese rider in the centre. Rash on the extreme left. Second home. And the tandem man. And I'm looking for Nostine. Yep, down. Uh, Nostine down on the uh, inside, but one from the track is the man really who... I was I'm surprised to see him here, but he had a phenomenal crash in training. And uh, there was some doubt that he was going to ride in the World Championship, so don't be surprised if he, uh, if he has a, a tough old ride in this, this Kieran now, because it really is... Uh, the crash he had was a very, very uh, bad one indeed, and uh, there was some doubt that he'd even make it to the world. So keep your fingers crossed for Nostin as, as they're lining up now. Underway, picking up with the, the motor. In the uh, Japanese Kieran as such, the lead-off rider is actually a, a, a rider on a bike as such. When you come to this level here, uh, they have the little motor pace on the front, which they uh, follow around until it pulls off for one and a half laps from the finish, and then it's all systems go. Eyes down for the look-in and see who uh, goes through. Nostin, the reigning champion in this heat. He was second in 1993 and what is relatively new to the world scene. It wasn't put in the track championships until 1980 when Danny Clark won the first two of them at uh, Bessanson and then at Bruno. That's Nostin down at the bottom. Benedetto, the Italian in blue. They're usually pretty good at this, the Italians. Federico Paris finishing third last year. Virtually with Tubner in second spot. This, by the way, can get a bit uh, fractious sometimes in Kieran racing. They can bump and barge and push. It's uh, quite a known thing for the old elbows to come out and the barging to go on. And Nostain is in a good position up there at the front. The Japanese rather has drifted off the back here. I mean, the whole sport was, ah, uh, I thought I had a crash, and there we are. So New Zealand rather Kleitsch has come down. I'm saying that they have these little problems in Kieran Racing. And out we go. So we're just sitting down with Nostain still on the front at the moment. The Italian in the, in the pale blue. Going back to the third. Rash down in second spot. They're starting to wind this one up at the moment. And still Nostin on the front. Rash behind him. Well, those are the two, I suppose, you might say. A look away, the Japanese is coming from behind. The white, the red, and down out goes one of the riders. I told you it could be rough and tumble, and they can push and shovel. They come down and finishing straight now. Nostin on the front. Let's go, but the Japanese comes at him. Oh, I think uh, as they go round now, down that back straight, and still Nostin's got it. Still not seen, he's got a Japanese has blown a gasket now and Rash is in second spot, still though, coming up very quickly indeed after having a good slipstream on the way round, the Italian is trying to come at them. Benedetto, has he left it too late though? No, he's also in trouble as Rash and Nostin fight the line and that uh, went to my book, so nice victory for Nostin, Rash in second spot and uh, the reigning champion then showing that he's recovered from that terrible accident and we're glad to see him back. Big fellow this uh, chap, Nostin, well over six foot, big burly fellow, quite a nice chap too, but uh, when it comes to thundering down those finishing straight, he doesn't stand much. Let's see what happens here. It's exactly the way he rode it in Sicily. Rode it from the front and you think, no, 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 I can't believe he's going to go all the way. Oof. I think that he didn't touch it, will he? No, that, that no like I think he just tried to lean on him yep. and he just didn't move. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I said it spills and spills, it's Kieran Ray. I'm sorry to use a, a cliche like that, but you get plenty of them. And now we have a look at the sprint with Nostine. No, there's another another one there. Oh, there's a, yeah, there he goes. I think somehow they're dropping down onto this uh, well, slippy tyre roll there. Yeah, the tyre actually rolled off, which is what caused the problem there. And he's out. This is uh, very unprofessional. But North Dean rode that exactly the same as he rode in Sicily from the front, and no one can believe he's going to ride for two laps on the front and not die, and he didn't die. Superb. So he's completely out of trouble. Well, if he can keep doing that, he's up for a repeat performance of last year. I think on this slippy surface, he's very well to uh, to be out of the way at the front there, if he's got the strength to do it. So the first two go straight in. The first two going through into the second round. In this one, there's a little list up on your screen at the moment. Michael Hudnup, the big burly German, should be in with a shout for this one. But Brand Andanoli, Danish rider, you can't discount him either. And uh, the unpronounceable Greek rider, Vasilopoulos, Pavlos, sorry, is uh, another one I've seen in action. But of the top two, for my money, it's going to be this fellow here with the ponytail at the back. It's the man mounting himself, Michael Hudnup and the red and white colours further down the track of Brian Dandenel. Yes or no, Chris, what do you think? Well, Hooden has certainly got the skill, very much a showman, superb crowd pleaser at all the World Cup here in a sprint event, so he has admittedly lost the edge off his speed now, but tends to make up for that with skill. I've watched him over the years with his counterpart, Heslick. He stopped back in 88, came up together, and he's, uh, he really has been one of the finer products to come out of the East German school of sprinting. And that they dominated during those years. So, if he hasn't got it in the legs here, as I say, I suspect he'll make that up in skill. Uh, I've seen him come down some quite pumps as well in his time, uh, because he starts leaning on people and if he misses, he's, a, he's, he's probably going to be the biggest bloke there is on the track when he comes down with a thump. Definitely an Arnold look alike, yep. it's Michael. Well, he and Neewon have to have the bags on with each other doing the individual sprints, so we're going to see some more of that later on in the championships. Oh, there we are! Oh, he's down already! Oh, no! There's something wrong with this track. They're saying all along it's too slippy. Pubner was the one who led the complaints that wanted the track resurfacing. He said it's too slippy, and we've seen two rows come down before without hardly touching anybody. And we'll have that again in action replay, I'm sure, but I don't... Well, did he touch somebody? I don't know. Just the slightest <laughs> lean, yeah. and the wheel tends to go from under, especially at these lower speeds. But Michael's certainly skilled, and he came down very early in the race there. Unlike him, now I think... By the amount of crashes we've seen in the last three minutes, I would say there's definitely something wrong with the surface here, which isn't helping matters. And Hubner, he won his heat last year. Folks, the Lithuanian was second, and Hubner went straight into the second round where uh, he here won that again. one. Yep. Now, exactly did happen here. He tries to go inside. Uh, this wheel, the slight, you watch the Kieran's, the slight whipping movement as they just try to intimidate the person next to them and it just seems to be enough that little twitch that you'll see quite a lot here it's enough to see them go down they have to keep a perfectly straight line surface not so bad for pursuiting but obviously not made for Kieran riding not an event that ever appealed to me I must admit I can say it's what you don't volunteer for I should think I have actually a very similar size to uh, Hoover's left leg but unfortunately that's not enough <laughs> no, you've got to be a big, tough fella. Uh, Mike Danny Clark, who won the first uh, couple of them, he isn't a big fella, but he's a very fast man. He, uh, what kilometre in the uh, what was it, Camelot Games in uh, in it got to Sue, I think it was way back. Uh, it was in Australia. Yep, yeah, and um, also when it was in Wiley and Sharp, Danny. 
very wily and very nippy sprinter in Scotland. But spotting the American here still on the front, uh, Trey Gannon's going quite quickly. Gannon is, is well up at the front on this one. I'd be surprised uh, if he doesn't see another crash. But uh, Dan Donnell is way off the back. He was one I thought might come through and have a go at this one. As Kosh is also in there. Well, Kosh is a very quick man indeed, but uh, still the American on the front at the moment. Leading this one through. Oh, that's the go, yeah. But I think he's too far out of it now. Yeah. Oh, the speed of the, of the Russian oh. coming up now. Very quickly indeed. Kosh is the one I thought should just show well. And he's come over into the centre. Dandenau's left it too late, I think, to get there. Well, no, he didn't make that second place. No. He's going to have to go through the reps. But uh, Kosh came through very quickly indeed. The back. I'm surprised to see him sitting by that uh, third, fourth back. Dandenau, I think, was hoping to get a bit of a toe off him. But certainly the other riders will now have to go back into the charge, as will the Hubner, who came off. At least he gave him a chance to... Uh, to go again. That was for the scent. Good lunge. But not, obviously hasn't got long enough arms there. Oof, the slip on his back wheel. You can see it. That track is definitely going to call, I think, a lot of complaints. And I think Mr. Hubner goes and leans on somebody. Saying the slip of that back wheel yeah. here. Yeah. Now these chaps are experts, by the way. You've watching at home, if you've not seen these before, these blokes have been riding on their bikes on the tracks now for up to 10 years, most of them, and they don't jump around like that unless there's something radically wrong with the, with the conditions out there, and it's uh, not good at all. Having said that, that particular slip supposedly took place on the upper part of the track where the plastic coating hasn't been applied. So. Yeah, I think his, his tyre went up it and down it. So what they say is the transition from one part to the other uh, is where the diff danger comes. Because if it's slippy, then it's not. And if, you, if you're going slightly from one to the other, I don't know whether he, he, he actually moved out there, but the, 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 the change is quite uh, remarkable. Well, you can see the colour difference from this shot. See where that plastic coating stops. Well, if I got that one right, it was Valley Ford of uh, Barbados that took that one from Nikolai Kosh with the Dandel back into the third spot. And uh, the next of the heats coming up. wheel certainly was going on to the slippy part of the track and the front wheel was going on to the less slippy part of the track if the uh, if the conditions that have been talked about so often apply here Next round on your screens Italy in the pale blue jersey quickly into what about third spot back from the front better known for his tandem riding settling in behind uh, Banzel of South Africa with the New Zealander leading on the front, uh, John Rastrick. Ralph Nielsen, another very accomplished performer at the 
the kilometer. Sorry, that's a Kieran. Coming back in four spots at the moment. The tandem's out of the World Championships now. Certainly, Harris and Capitano, Kipper, all great tandem riders. And I used to like watching the tandem, probably just as well he has been taken out of the World Championships this year with his track being so slippy because we had more than our fair share of crashes. Just in ordinary straightforward racing on tracks that have a lot more grip than this one. Coming from back then, Yamada, the Japanese rider, who has had his little toe round, trying to come through. Still from New Zealand on the front is Rastrick. And the Japanese rider is now coming at the front. Yamada has taken over the front. Yamada has now gone straight through the front of this little one. And with the Argentinian rider just behind him, uh, Guidoni. So it's Yamada with Guidoni in second spot. The New Zealand rider just moved up into third to stay there at the moment. And Paris has not shown himself. He's just sitting in fourth spot, allowing himself to be towed around here then. And still the Japanese on the front at the moment. Yamada leads this one. Yamada going down there with the Argentinian rider just behind him, still hanging on there, Guido, and look at Paris coming up in the pale blue, goes fast like an arrow, Paris is zooming over the top here, he took the draft all the way around, he's going to make it look so easy coming down the finishing side, so watch out for that fellow, but who's going to be second, goes to the Argentinian, Guidoni, well, Guidoni came back through the repechage last year, he got beaten in his heat, Paris in fact uh, finished in second spot in the Kieran last year in the heats behind uh, Martin Nostein. So he went through with Nostein. There he is, Paris, taking that one ahead. Arcadoni, who won't have to do what he did last year and come back into the repechage, but the rest of those riders will. A clean fight, this one. Nobody upending themselves. At this stage, I'd like to thank uh, Chris Broadman for his uh, help in the commentary so far. Uh, Chris has gone off to have a bit of a rest because part of his training program uh, means that he can't sit here commentating on Eurosport for ever and a day. We've had uh, a couple of hours at it, so he's gone off to have a shower and rest. And if tomorrow morning he's going to put in a bit of training as well before we go on it tomorrow evening. Now this bringing together some good talent again. Most of these chaps, well, certainly Schultz, Mandy and Moreno all know each other very well indeed. here that's been riding against each other many times in the past and I think we're in for some some interesting activity uh, show from Belgium then number 37 Frederick Manier from uh, France number 42 Jose Manuel Moreno Number 48, Lovito from Argentinian, in pale blue. 36, 34 is Paul Swift from the USA. 13 is Gabriel Diaz from Colombia. Eugenie Toroski is the Ukrainian rider, number 50. And Pete Lanius of Estonia, number 40. First two to go through into the final shoots down the bottom very quickly and also alongside him the American uh, Paul Swift.
The little motorbike at the front, the journey as we call it, only there to maintain the same pace for the riders. Before it falls off the front, they can change places back here if they wish to do so. And they can't pass the little motor up in front. So far it seems that, well, we saw me, uh, Nostine get it from the the front most of the other heats it looks like you've got to be about third fourth back from the front to um, have a chance of coming first so shoots first at the moment swift in second spot Juice has been leading all the way around, but he's now dropped in onto the Argentinian's wheel. And Swift back in third spot. And the gaps are beginning to open up now. There's a long, strung out group of riders. Ah, the action's coming from behind, so the Argentinian Lobito. He's still having to, uh, to stay out there, though he's doing it, and Schultz is coming up, made him very fast indeed. Lovito on the front, then Schultz is there. And the Frenchman come up very quickly indeed, Manny, Manny's got to make it. Manny comes over the top, Manny and Schultz, well, they've been together very often to pass these two. Manny, that right the inside, comes the Spanish rider. Oh, that was close. Ooh, 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 ooh. That was ever so dangerous. Who got that one? They may have disqualified the Spanish rider who came up on the inside then. And uh, I don't know, but certainly we'll have to have a look at the replay on that one to see what happened because you're not allowed to ride on the blue bit on the inside. Manny threw to first spot. The Spanish rider, did he or did he not go along the blue bit? And if they allow that one to stand with, they probably might do it. means that Schuss has got to go into the... Uh, into the... I think Moreno might find himself put into the repercharge. I'll wait for confirmation on that one because it was a good win then for Manje going over into first spot. He's through into the next round. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's no doubt about that then. As we look at the final of the, of the series, we've had four of these qualifying heats that Moreno went right down to the blue one. So that was it then uh, tonight at 2100 hours. You can see we're going to have the uh, evening's performance for you when we'll be having the... The second round of the Kieran with Martin Ostein there together with Christian Aru of... Uh, China, Nikolai Kovs of Russia, Eric Schoes of Belgium, Michael Hubner of Germany lining up now. I'll give you the other two runs in just a moment. Take on our program after the here in the second round, we're going to have the repechage for the women's race, then the one kilometre time trial. Oh, yes, well, we've had to do quite a bit of work on this, this, this track. Causing more than a few problems for and sundry. Uh, sweeping down the bottom half, and you can hear the whistles in the background. They want the race to get on the way, but as far as the riders are concerned, we do need uh, to have the track in the best possible condition. 
all neat and tidy. here and I'm not surprised that they're insisting that the track is absolutely clean because we've had uh, if you're watching our program earlier on in the ladies sprinting uh, riders sliding down the track so Martin Nostein on the left hand side of your track there it's Scoots there and Hubner looking at what is going on now Hubner fought his way back through the repechage into the second round here. He fell off in his uh, previous round when they were starting in no more than, what, I suppose, 50 metres from the line. He kicked back and uh, he slid down the track. And so Hubner had to fight his way back to the repechage there. You see the blue jersey. Oh, that's uh, Patrick Serkiew holding up uh, Eric Schoos with the maroon crash hat. Third from the top of the track in uh, his final came in second spot behind uh, Manier so I'm glad to see Hubner back in the second round after that disastrous crash that knocked him out on the first round he's been the one who's been very uh, abrasive I should use that word I suppose when the track is so smooth <laughs> anyway he's been very abrasive about this track and saying that it's a uh, not exactly what it should be no disrespect to, to the Colombians because when you suddenly have this quality of international competition descend upon you and you make a nice track and suddenly do, you discover that um, things oh no fear look at that I love that uh, no fear it's all this crash out you have all these chaps descend upon you uh, to great level and discover things aren't quite right in the, uh, the 11th hour well there's been concern about uh, the the uh, cleaning up of the track and the painting of it the Chilean rider there we just had a look at Aru, Christian Aru and there you can see the start list the Martin Nostein, Christian Aru Nikolai Kofs from Russia going down here the Italian rider uh, Benete who surprised a few people with his speed getting through into this final as well and there they go in the first of the Kieran Heats they had four heats, eight riders up, and the first two went straight through into the final. The Repechage, we had four heats with six riders in each, and the first two in each case have fought their way through. And now, we're having these two heats of eight riders up, and the first four go into the, the final. So watch out for the first four. The reigning world champion, Martin Ostein, also the sprint champion. In there at the moment. Last year, the world championship, Ostein finished first. Uh, uh, Nostein first, sorry. Open a second, uh, Federico Paris in third spot. Paris to ride in the next heat. Interesting, you see, uh, one, two, three, four back from the front here. Uh, not seen in the Star Spangled Banner jersey, lying fourth now. He's been tracked by Hubner just above him. Those two have to make their move at some point, and I think that barring accidents, both should go through. But the question is, will Schultz or Arrow go with them? Bennett on Italy wedged up there alongside New Zealander the cut and thrust is now about to happen then 
Just these two laps to go. Not signs move through to the front. I thought that might happen. He's a strong man despite the crash he had at Trexler Town. His home track he had a bad crash. And uh, he was at one time looked like he wouldn't make the world championship. But he's done it very well indeed then. The chilling comes up over the top and still not sign is leading. It's going to be all pushed down. He's going to go down. I can see it coming. This is going to be. And look at Hook the win over the top. This is going to be a wall of attrition. Who stays upright gets into the final. And uh, one, two, three, four, five riders left. So the fifth man is going to be the odd man out of this in love Hupner though he's going to try and set his difference with Nostine up the front Hupner and Nostine coming down here but they're going to be through into the final as then Hupner from Nostine just ahead of the Chilean rider but the Japanese fellow is really out and in all sorts of trouble I said to you that this track is slippy and it's bad and you've just seen a big example of how difficult it can be oh dear me it's like emergency ward 10 Nowhere to go, the Japanese rider had been down inside, he was cutting up, he lost complete control of his bike. I'm not sure that that was just bad riding or bad track, but he took out the riders behind him. Uh, down went uh, uh, Benedetti, the Italian, right over the top, looped the loop completely. And this is the Italian, Mario Benedetti. Hubner is on the, sorry, uh, Nostein's on the front. Look at the Japanese rider, he's lost control of his bike, he's trying to cut up now, he's going straight up, there's nowhere to go. He's just taking out the New Zealand rider. And I think that's John Rastrix who's just been taken out, but Hubner and Nostine fortunately staying out of trouble. that at about 40 miles an hour. So Yoshioka, the Japanese rider, very skilled in Kieran racing, who cut up the inside and took out Benetton of uh, Italy. But there, uh, Hubner, just ahead of Nostin. Arrow going into third spot and shoots into fourth. Look at this. These two are very experienced runners. I don't think they're very happy at the moment. All that doesn't look very good at all. Benetton from Italy being stretched off. It shows the courage of these competitors. And we have another look at what happened in this Kieran second round. Italy being stretched off after the second round in the Kieran. He had fought his way back to the repechage and had the misfortune to find Yoshioka coming at him with nowhere to go. Japanese rider here, Toshimasa Yoshioka being stretched off. He was the one who found himself going up the ranking. Watch it again. See the man fourth back to the front in the white jersey with the red stripes. Goes upwards, has nowhere to go. I think he hit Lovito of Argentina. Italian went straight into the Japanese rider whilst the Argentinian slid down the banking. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed this is not a serious accident to Marcello Benetton. That was the first then of the second round in the Kieran and the whole of the stadium a buzz 
with the drama in the Kieran and the whole of the stadium a buzz with the drama which is taking place on this track and this is the this, this is the list of the Raja next start list the Raja's in the second round of the Kieran round two Palace Mani Raj Guidoni Yamada Van Zyl and Moreno and Clay Gannon from the US of A. Trey Gannon at the bottom of the track looking very very serious indeed and uh, the Americans of this particular dictate with uh, Marty Nostein the world champion have really got something to live up to Nostein already through the first four Go into the next round. <laughs> so having had the first round when we had eight riders on the track for four heats and the top two went through straight into this next round and the record charge when we had four rounds of six riders each now we've got the riders going through into the final we eight riders to the final we've already got four from that first i won't say race it turned it, it turned into something like uh, a massacre in other words you stay up on, on your bike you get into the into the final and we know that martin ostein uh, it looked like a ruler and uh, Hubner uh, and Schultz have gone into finals, so who of this group here is going to make their way into final as well to meet up with the reigning world champion and, uh, and mounted himself, Mr. Michael Hubner. Watch out for the pale blue jersey of Federico Palace. Palace is a very, very quick uh, sprinter indeed. He's by one, two, three, four back to the front of him. Also, Frederick Manu from uh, uh, France, a, a, a white jersey with some bluish uh, markings on it. We should expect him to go through. Emmanuel Rash from Germany, he's now lying third in the string, should go through as well. Uh, so those three will be my selections, but uh, anybody is in with a shout now as they start to go. And the, on the front is uh, Van Zyl of uh, South Africa, but oh, he swung up and they've all gone and left the man out there in front. Remember, it's the top four that go through, and the Spaniard has gone for this one. Jose Maria Moreno, who's in a great kilometer champion in the past, has steamed the front come all from mapping and have never seen it like this before in Kieran racing and Moreno has gone like an absolute bullet from the gun a champagne cork popping out of the bottle of fizz and the rest are nowhere they're fighting for second third and fourth spot and he's caught them all on the hop Moreno's going to take this one that's a brilliant ride by this uh, kilometer sprint specialist acknowledging the crowd's applause and the way the rest come swinging around and thank you Mr Cameron thank you Mr producer we haven't got on our screen who was second third and fourth i'll give the news and information as soon as we can pick it up yeah he won money coming through into second spot rush is fighting behind him to try and get third and he just makes it and Paris I'm not sure I think Paris got to the fourth spot we we'll wait for confirmation of that but Mane, Arash and Paris second third and fourth 
but I didn't expect this man here to catch them all napping like he did but we we'll have to wait for the verdict because Gudoni of Argentina might have just sniffed the fourth spot as uh, Moreno who's actually been riding you see Kelme on his shorts here he's been doing a lot of riding on the road and uh, he's decided to knock it on the head in the last uh, few weeks and concentrate on his track career because he's been mainly known as a previous world champion on the kilometre as well uh, so now he's in to the final of the Kieran <laughs> There, a list of the riders Hubner, Nostin, Aru, Schultz, and Moreno, Mani, Arash, and Paris in the final. Hubner had to fight his way back into the final, having uh, crashed in his first heat. He had to come back for the repechage. A bit sore, he just slipped off the banking. He's a big fellow right in the middle of the pack right now. And if you didn't catch our earlier program, let me confirm then that the results of the kilometre. Shane Kelly of Australia ran out victor in 1 minute 00. zero point six one three seconds a new world record in fact the second place man or Russo who's been twice the senior champion and past junior champion was pushed down into second place inside the world record his time 101.350 and even Aaron Hartwell managed to break the world record to finish third in 101.740 and the French rider at that also have uh, Toué, who set a cracking time early on in the proceedings, was 102.434, which was um, just a sniff outside the old world record, which has been standing since uh, way back in 1986. That was the kilometer we thought, in fact, we were going to get some records in the more explosive of the events, but here, with the Kirin, nothing to do with world records, it's to do with push, shove, and hope that you all stand upright to the very end. Go! There we go. They'll pick up the little motor pace, this big sport in Japan, Kirin Racing, where the riders amass fortunes, the top uh, professionals in Japan through Kirin Racing, riding on uh, much bigger tracks than this, by the way, much wider tracks and tracks. Although this is a 333 metre track, they favour between 330 metres and up to 400 metres, the tracks in Japan, and somewhat uh, flatter bankings with more space the riders will form upon. This track here will be a bit uh, sharp as far as the riders are concerned, and the Japanese who invented this particular branch of the sport, having the uh, pacemaker riding a bike, not riding a, uh, a moped, as we'd call it back in England, a journey, as they call it in Europe and he has to maintain a constant pace and the riders behind him cannot overtake that journey until he pulls up and then it's all systems go for the last uh, two and a half laps uh, on the front then the Italian rider at the moment uh, Paris an extremely good sprinter and best known for his medals on the tandem which has now been excluded from the world championships and later on tonight we're going to show you the Madison which will be a new event in the World Championships. Although well known to followers of the six-day sport. So that Paris on the front at the moment. The reigning world champion, Marty uh, Nostin, is just behind him. And Marcello Aru from Chile in the red has been a bit of a surprise in this race so far he's just sitting up over the top there in the red color looking down to see whether where the, where the fast men are going to come from and back behind martin Ostein in the blue and the green colors a big uh, menacing figure of hubner and they on the 
two laps round, away they go with uh, Nossin on the front, leading from the front of Palacy just behind him, Hubner into third spot, the Chilean is dropped down in the bottom of the bank and he's riding inside the blue line, he gets himself slung out for that, if he's not careful, Nossin on the front, looking to repeat his victory from 1994, he's still on the front, going, oh, look at the speed of the back of Moreno, the uh, Spanish rider comes thundering round here, that's a tremendous performance then by the uh, uh, Spanish rider, close up on the world champion now and over the top then comes the Frenchman Manny dropped down in there but Hubner tries to the line and suddenly Manny comes from nowhere Manny comes from nowhere the Frenchman absolutely rocketed past the opposition we've seen some sprinting on this track and that really was one straight out of the back pocket he came from nowhere Money. well, he's got to be delighted. Everybody around here, too. The, the uh, French have got to be very pleased indeed with that one. They lost out with Russo in the kilometre, but they've now got themselves a gold medal with that superb performance from Manny. That was something else. I, I hope we can see back a replay of the way in which he came from nowhere, because here we go. He's coming through now. He has time to sit up, put his hands in the air, and Hubner and the rest are just nowhere. That is absolutely marvellous. Manny then throwing his hands up there. What a tremendous character, known as uh, both a tandem rider, the world champion. First of all, he won the championship of the world on a tandem in 1987. He did it again in 1988, he did it again in 1989. He's been consistently a great tandem rider. Well, he won the Kieran in the World Cup at Manchester. Now he's got himself that uh, medal, the gold medal, and a well-deserved one too. That really caught everybody by surprise. A brilliant ride by the, the Frenchman to take himself into first place uh, with Hubner second and Palace in third spot. Riding on one of those bicycles that um, 